All right, praise God. All right, good to see you again. I already saw you early this morning, and now I get to do another video. And um, I just found a place here just in case it rains. I got a little bit of shelter over me, and it's kind of nice. Kind of neat. I found this uh, nest right here. So isn't that cool? It's amazing how God's creation is uh, taken care of. He cares even for the birds, so how much more for you? All right, praise God. Well, okay, now what I got to do is get to my uh, pictures here where I put my... Uh, we talked about that Hasmonean and the Herodian, the Grecian to the Roman, and how we started out with this, these priests... Now we're going to get into those last days and those last 28 priests. The last days in this contrast in priests, this priesthood. So there was a very corrupt priest, priesthood. But let's look at these last days as we see in the Bible. So let's look at Acts 2.14. Peter saying, this is the last days. Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and heed my words. For these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days. So this is right now what they're seeing, what the prophet Joel was speaking of in the last days says God that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh your sons and your daughters shall prophesy so isn't it great the Holy Spirit is coming on the men and the women here your young men shall see visions your old men shall dream dreams and on my men servants and on my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. So here you have a contrast here a bit with these things are pouring out of the Spirit and then this stuff of like a destruction. So we have blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Praise God. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So the pouring out of the Spirit, that's what they have. Remember Jesus said, wait till you're endued with power by the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus Christ is sitting there at the right hand with that power. And then that power is coming down through his body. These are men and women as witnesses to God Almighty. So we'll continue. Acts 2, 22. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands, have crucified and put to death, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. And then we'll go up to Acts 2.37. Men and brethren, what shall we do? So that's what the Jews are asking Peter. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So this that was coming out in the last days, that gift of the Holy Spirit, right there where Peter was, they were endued by power, by the Holy Spirit, and it was pouring out. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. 
And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. So see here they had the power of God Almighty that was working through them. People were being saved. So this is the last days. Uh, well, you had where they were established under Jesus Christ as the high priest, as we're shown in Hebrews. And this other priesthood was going down. They were a murderous priesthood, but these were the ones filled by the Holy Spirit, and uh, both men and women. So this is awesome, this kingdom of priests that's going on. So let's look at these 28 priests again. There's just a show of the 28, some of the different things that happened. But then let's make it easier to uh, take a lot of them out and so we can see easier the big A, Annas. And then his five sons and his son-in-law, Caiaphas. So his five sons coming down to the little A, Annas, son of Annas, or he's also called Ananias or Annas. Because uh, you'll notice that they can be called these different names here. So it does get a little bit confusing. But um, so we have this one, this priesthood, this family of priests. We talked about how Jesus got brought before Annas, then to Caiaphas, and the last son there, just to remind ourselves, that was the one that killed James, the brother of Jesus. And then he was deposed by Albinus and Agrippa II for what he had done. But then what he's doing is he's uh, beating his own priests, stealing their tithes. Some of the lesser priests were starving. And so these priests are not good. So what Jesus is doing is setting us apart. Well, let's look at John 18:12. Here we have the Jewish priests opposing the kingdom of God. They arrest Jesus. Jesus is taken to Annas first, then Caiaphas, the high priest. Then the detachment of troops and the captain and the officers of the Jews arrested Jesus and bound him. And they led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. Now it was Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Well, isn't that something there? Here we have the bones of Caiaphas, just found in 1990. So they still have this in Israel over there. That's his box of bones. But with Jesus, we don't have any box of bones anywhere. Jesus was lifted up. Praise God, he is lifted up. So wherever you are, Jesus is the head of his church. If you've turned to Jesus Christ, you are the church. Church means called out ones. You're called out under him to proclaim the praises of him. So uh, praise God by the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, well, pray. Ask God for the Holy Spirit, and he won't give you snakes like this other priesthood would. He'll give you the real deal. So let's continue to look. All right, let's look at Matthew 26, 63. The high priest Caiaphas strikes Jesus, spits in his face, and declares a death penalty for him. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, It is as you said. Nevertheless, I say to you, hereafter you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Wow, well that's something. Uh, if you see God coming on clouds, that's a destruction that's about to hit. All right, verse 65. Then the high priest tore his clothes, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. What further need do we have of a witness? Look, now you have heard his blasphemy. What do you think? They answered and said, He's deserving of death. Then they spit in his face and they beat him. And others struck him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy to us, Christ, who is the one who struck you? 
You think about that, sitting at the right hand of power. Let's look at Psalm 110, the Psalm of David. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. See, these, this priesthood is an enemy to God Almighty. They rejected Jesus Christ. They wanted uh, their king, Caesar. That's what they wanted. All right, verse 2, The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power. Yeah, praise God. Did you volunteer to Jesus? Have you done that yet? See, you can turn to Jesus Christ as Lord. He gave his life down for you so all those sins could be wiped out. So you could be made brand new again. Now let's see what else it says. In the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning, you have the dew of your youth. The Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Praise God, the priesthood that would last forever. The Lord is at your right hand. He shall execute kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the nations. He shall fill the places with dead bodies. He shall execute the heads of many countries. He shall drink of the brook by the wayside. Therefore, he shall lift up the head. Well, think about it. Jesus Christ, he bowed his head down in death for us so our sins could be on him. He is the lamb that was slain for us and he's exalted in power so that you could have power by the Holy Spirit. That's why he's, he told Peter and the others, wait until you're endued with power of the Holy Spirit because this power was coming from God Almighty at the right hand of God and it was coming through them to proclaim the gospel to be a witness of Jesus Christ that there is no other way to be saved other than Jesus Christ and so all the Jews were coming into exactly what the prophets had prophesied before that that Jesus would come he'd come riding in on a donkey colt they'd pay uh, the the 30 pieces of silver for him that he would suffer that his hands and his feet would be pierced for us so praise God, the suffering servant, Jesus Christ, who uh, the nation, them as a nation, they didn't fulfill it. They didn't turn to him, only the remnant, only the faithful. So it is the same way with the rest of the world. It's not going to be all, the, all of the world that turn to Jesus, but it'll be the remnant uh, that turns to him. Now, along with that, uh, let's look at Daniel 7, 13. We got this everlasting dominion, this glory, a kingdom which shall not be destroyed. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. So this is a vision that Daniel is seeing. A Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. He came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. So praise God, isn't that awesome how Daniel is seeing this? Because Daniel is seeing that stone that would strike the nations. That nations would begin to collapse. That statue, Babylon, maybe Persia, Greece, Rome, they would begin to collapse. But this stone would grow into a great mountain, a kingdom that would last forever. And so we're being shown Jesus coming in clouds to the Father. And they are one, but they're coming in this dominion because God had to have a way where he could come and be the sacrifice for us because we had turned away from him so the whole world was sunk all of creation is sunk the way creation we see it now is not the way god intended to have it in the garden of eden nor the way he intends to have it after he comes and judges but the only way through is through the lamb jesus christ through that priesthood so there's a such a stark difference between these two priesthoods. 
So let's look further on. Now, Daniel is seeing that from his vision of seeing this come to heaven. But guess what? We see the, the apostles seeing this from this end. So let's see what we have in Acts 1.5. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now, Jesus said. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So see how they're seeing this vision of Jesus going up in a cloud, but then Daniel is seeing that vision of him coming in a cloud to the Father. And so this dominion, this kingdom that would last forever. Wow, praise God. And so wait until you're endued with power. And that's what we first read about were the last days. These are the last days. So this last days of this one priesthood is going out the door. Their whole temple, everything, where this other priesthood is in through Jesus Christ that is not corrupt, that's by the Holy Spirit, that's in righteousness, that's in truth in Jesus Christ. So praise God that you have been bought with a price and you've been brought into something because when you see how corrupt this priesthood was and what Jesus Christ is doing, what God wants, so all the ends of the world could come in to Jesus Christ to be saved. So, you know, preaching the kingdom of God and preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things concerning Jesus Christ our Lord. That's what Paul was talking about, wasn't he? So I really like that. In fact, I think I'm going to put that on a poster. I usually get all these posters made up before I do this, but they were a little slow this time, so I didn't get my poster, but I will have it soon. Let's look at Acts 4, 5. Peter and John before Annas and Caiaphas, contrast in families of priests. And it came to pass on the next day that the rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest, were gathered together in Jerusalem. Now this... Um, with Annas and this family there, uh, well, Annas is uh, like head of the Sanhedrin, and these are, there's Pharisees and Sadducees, so these guys are Sadducees. Um, now, they didn't even believe in an afterlife, the Sadducees. That's why they're sad, you see. They didn't believe in the afterlife, but the Pharisees did. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Well, what did they do? They healed a man by the power of Jesus Christ. Verse 8, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, If we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone, nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Well, think about it. These country bumpkins from Galilee coming in and telling these sophisticated priests what their business was. Well, they should have known the right business, but they did not know the right business. Their business was about gathering money and having power over people and... and um, 
taking widows' houses. It was about beating the lesser priests and taking their tithes so they could amass much wealth. It's about cornering the markets to make money. That's why Jesus went in and overthrew the tables at the temple. That was interfering with their market and they didn't like it. So they are going to plot murders and death against others. But praise God, they got no power of the Holy Spirit. They got the power of their father, the devil. So don't worry whether they can destroy the body, but uh, you better worry about the one who can destroy both the body and your soul and cast it to the lake of fire, right? Because that's where those guys are going. Well, let's look at this um, one, Jesus, who could wash us from our sins and make us a kingdom of priests. Let's look at Exodus 19.4. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if, so circle that if, you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people. For all the earth is mine. Yeah, not just a small portion of the earth, it's the whole earth. And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. So they had that priesthood on a condition, didn't they? But they didn't meet conditions for it. Praise God, Jesus did, our high priest. Let's look at 1 Peter 2, 7. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief corner stone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble, being disobedient to the word. So what are they? Here, Peter, a Jewish man, the country bumpkin, compared to these sophisticated priests, he's telling them they've been disobedient to the word, to which they also were appointed. They were very much appointed to it. But here, these lesser were going into the kingdom, like Peter, like the woman that was a harlot, drug, like the woman at the well, like uh, many of these others. Okay, they stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So there, there's a difference in kingdoms, a kingdom of this world and the kingdom of God, darkness and light, who once were not a people. So who were not a people? See, the Jews were a people, but those apart from that were not a people, but are now the people of God, right? Who had not obtained mercy. Well, who had not obtained mercy? The Jews had mercy through God and through the sacrifice, all those systems. But here for the whole world to where the faithful remnant of Jews, along with the faithful remnant of the whole world, are coming together, obtaining mercy. So who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Awesome. Praise God. So that royal priesthood in his marvelous light proclaiming praises of him. So let's look at Revelations 1, 5, 2. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings or a kingdom and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Isn't that awesome? The uh, kingdom of priests who these Jewish men are proclaiming that this priesthood is in Jesus Christ. It's not in this worldly, corrupt priesthood that the, went by the lust of their flesh. Uh, yeah, they might know, know the word, but they didn't understand it. They didn't have any understanding of it. Though they could read it, they were blind. Though they could have it read to them, they were deaf to hear what it was really talking about. So you and Christ by the Holy Spirit and see the Holy Spirit is working with Peter, Paul, John, James, Stephen and the, the rest of these women that are with them on the maid servants and men servants that had the Spirit of God poured forth out on them. So let's look at these priests further. Let's look at Acts 12, 1. We have King Herod Agrippa I, the first one who kills James, 
the brother of John. Remember John and James, the uh, sons of thunder. And why does he do this? To please the Jews. And he harasses the church and arrests Peter. So Acts 12, 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. Well, then what do you think he was going to do by bringing Peter before them? Um, he definitely wasn't going to pat him on the back. He's probably going to have him killed just like he did John to please the Jews. And here these are Jewish men. So these, this Jewish priesthood is wanting to silence Jews that will speak against what they were doing with their power, their worldly powers, their worldly lusts, their worldly gains, but they're wanting to silence Jews. Uh, and see, the same thing goes on today that the, those who want to control this stuff, they're first trying to stop Jews from speaking, anybody that would speak up against them. And so, yeah, it's, it's funny how the same stuff goes on today. Uh, so you see in the world many these things that they're wanting to uh, stop free speech. Uh, you have to be really careful about what you say. That even in America they are putting so many laws, but they don't realize when they're putting up anti-Semitism laws, they're actually halting the free speech of Jews who would like to speak up against some of the um, atrocities that are even happening against them. Because some people that, that say they're Jews, a lot of times they just want control. And it's the same thing with the rest of the world. See, none of us in the world are any different than one another. We're all the same. All the same. And God is for everybody that can be saved through Jesus Christ. It's not just going through the Jews, through their power, uh, like, like it was at the time of Jesus. And, uh, but all this stuff's going down. So let's look at Acts 23.1. Ananias, son of Nebedeus, he strikes Paul. And then there's 40, more than 40, that are taking an oath to kill Paul, the witness of Jesus Christ. All right, Acts 23. Then Paul looked earnestly at the council and said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. And the high priest Ananias commanded those who stood by him to strike him on the mouth. Then Paul said to him, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. For you sit to judge me according to the law, and do you command me to be struck contrary to the law? And those who stood by said, Do you revile God's high priest? Then Paul said, I did not know, brethren, that he was the high priest. For it is written, You shall not speak evil of a ruler of your people. See, they didn't know who their ruler was. They put their rule as their self. God was their rule, but they were rejecting him. They rejected Jesus Christ. But when Paul perceived that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, he cried out in the council, Men and brethren, I'm a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. Concerning the hope and resurrection of the dead, I am being judged. And remember, the Sadducees did not believe that, but the Pharisees did. But the following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul. For as you have testified for me in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness at Rome. So isn't that great that Jesus is encouraging Paul? And when it was day, some of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under an oath, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. Now there were more than 40 who had formed this conspiracy. They came to the chief priests and elders and said, we have bound ourselves under a great oath that we will eat nothing until we have killed Paul. Well, isn't that awesome? That here they come before the chief priests, all these assassins. They're good at assassination. So good at it. So good at it today also. And how many people are getting lured into assassinating other people who they don't agree with. 
No, it's prevalent in our society. And I think a lot of people are getting duped, are getting uh, deceived into following this power of the devil and thinking assassination is okay. And isn't it amazing how they thought assassination is okay? Here they are supposed to be chief priests, priests of God, showing the light of God by righteousness. But no, they don't want to do that. They've hijacked the priesthood for themselves, exalting themselves above God, above the prophets, above Moses. And other men of the world want to follow this same line. Whether you're Jew or Gentile, you can be following the devil. You can call yourself Christian. Maybe you're still following the devil. Maybe you, you think it's okay to just do these assassinations. Well, you're in good company with these men. But this priesthood was going out the window. So again, let's look at these priests to remind ourselves. Annas and his five sons, his son-in-law, his last son, number 24, Ananus, son of Ananus, or Ananias, he's called, the one that killed James, uh, the brother of Jesus, the one who wrote the book of James. And then the last, of course, the last priest was instated by the, the Jewish zealots. You know, a sect of them were the, the Sicarii. They were the ones that were fantastic at assassinations. So let's look at Acts 24.1. Ananias to Festus against Paul to kill him in ambush. Now after five days, Ananias, the high priest, came down with the elders and a certain orator named Tertullus. These gave evidence to the governor against Paul. And when he was called upon, Tertullus began his accusation, saying, Seeing that through you we enjoy great peace and prosperity is being brought to this nation by your foresight. So yeah, they're really great buttering up to Felix. And you know what? What's kind of funny is they did have a time of peace and prosperity. But, you know, even this thing would come down at a time of peace and prosperity, even then, right? We accept it always and in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness. Now let's look at Felix and Drusilla, where they hear Paul on Christ. They're hearing on righteousness, self-control, and judgment to come. And he ends up still leaving Paul in prison to please the Jews. After some days, when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. So isn't this awesome that Felix, the procurator, he's getting those taxes under Rome. Well, he's married to Drusilla. She's Jewish and she's married to, or she is sister of King Agrippa the, the second and Bernice or Berenice. Her name's spelled a couple of different ways. So she's sister. And all of these people have been hearing the gospel directly from Paul. Now, it's great that Paul was able to share the gospel for her to Drusilla here. And Drusilla, she is really known as somebody that was quite beautiful. And I think where she died was when Mount Vesuvius went off at Pompeii. But she was able to hear the gospel and praise God, I hope she turned to Jesus Christ before that destruction that she faced. After some days when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, who was a Jewish, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ. Now, as he reasoned about righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and answered, Go away for now. When I have a convenient time, I'll call you. Meanwhile, he also hoped that money would be given him by Paul, that he might release him. Therefore, he sent for him more often and conversed with him. But after two years... Porcius Festus succeeded Felix, and Felix, wanting to do the Jews a favor, left Paul bound. So interesting, you know, it's interesting that he was sharing with him right about righteousness, self-control, and judgment to come. Now, do you hear that much in churches these days? Well, praise God, go to a Bible-believing church, you should be hearing about uh, 
those things just as the you know the whole gospel not just part of it the whole thing and uh, of course it's up to you to read the bible you're supposed to read the bible to study to show yourself approved so you can uh, discern these things and you are the one that's been given the holy spirit that you can read this stuff and continue to grow in christ all right let's continue acts 25 1. Now when Festus had come to the province after three days, he went up from Caesarea to Jerusalem. So Festus is after Felix. He's taken over, but he goes to Jerusalem first. Then the high priest and the chief men of the Jews informed him against Paul. So what do they want? They immediately want this witness of Jesus Christ taken out. And they petitioned him, asking a favor against him, that he would summon him to Jerusalem while they lay in ambush along the road to kill him. So that was their plan. Of course, they're not telling Festus this, but their plan was to, to kill Paul. No, they can't deal with the witness of Jesus Christ because then people are going to go flock towards Jesus. Jews are going to turn towards Jesus. Uh, that's what they're concerned with right there. And then the rest of the world would be coming towards Jesus. They don't want that. Wow, did we come to the last of it? So then uh, think about what we've come through. Where we have been looking at the last days. This priesthood is about to go out. This new one came in through Jesus Christ. Now when is it about to go out? Well, that 40 years, Jesus is lifted up. He's at the Father, the right hand. Power is going through the body as a witness. But in that 40 years... That priesthood is going down. The, the temple's going down. This is such a corrupt priesthood that they are going to fill the whole land full of blood up to the horse's bridles. It was truly up to the horse's bridles at that time. And so look at this. We went from the Grecian to the Romans, the Hasmoneans to the Herodians, to establish this priesthood of these last 28 priests that are corrupt, and the whole land by these men that have turned from God to instate their own national kingdom, they're going to bloody the whole lands from the top to the bottom until lastly, Jerusalem is destroyed, the temple is destroyed, uh, those at Masada, there's going to be a mass suicide, uh, and... That's going to be of 960 men, women, and children that uh, they were so set on rebellion against God that they wouldn't turn to God. They would rather kill themselves than turn to God. And so we have uh, a picture of those things that was going on that Peter and Paul and the others were facing, but then this entryway into the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ. So praise God that you can turn to him. I, I pray that that was good uh, to take a look at those last 28 priests and at least be a little bit more familiar with them uh, because many in the world, even today, are trying to, even within the Christian realm, they're being deceived and, and turning back to these priests. Again, when we have, if you want to turn to a priest, a priest turn to Jesus Christ the high priest and realize who you are in Christ set apart as a kingdom of priests by his Holy Spirit look at what these men these maid servants and men servants are speaking by the power of the Holy Spirit look at Peter Paul John James Stephen and you can see more what they were facing and more about this separation of these families there's a family in God, and there's a family that's in the world of Satan. But then we have the kingdom of God. So praise God, he laid down his life for us so our sins could be on him and wiped out. But death did not hold Jesus Christ. He is lifted up, and death will not hold you either because Jesus is going to come back, and he's going to say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter the joy of your Lord. And even now... You can have the joy of the Holy Spirit in Jesus Christ. Praise God. Well, God bless you. Love you. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Amen.